Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're checking out the Carbon Doser. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are looking at the Carbon Doser, which is an electronic CO2 regulator. Um, so I've used many different regulators in the past and generally the ones use a needle valve and will slowly like gas kind of bubble through it. Um, how this one is different, it is electronic and uses the electronic pulse to do it. So it's extremely precise timing. So it does like a little blip and it lets out like a little gas kind of CO2 bubble. So it is extremely consistent. Now, one thing to note with these is they are not cheap. Um, I believe these are about $380-ish, so they're, they're not cheap. Even I have one on my water box, which I bought new because again, it was really hard to bite that much money. So I bought one used for about half the price and I've been using it for about a year now, and that's been extremely solid. Now, do you need one of these is the biggest question over a standard issue solenoid. Um, if you are using it for a calcium reactor, which likely you are, and if you have a pH probe in it, and I'm using an aquarium controller to turn the solenoid on and off, then I would say you do not need one of these. They're nice to have, but you don't need it. If you have, I would rather see someone put the money towards a continuous duty dosing pump so that you have that nice constant feed of water of your fluent drip rate, because that makes it really easy to dial it in. Now, if you do not have a pH controller and you're relying on just on the reactor, I think that these have a lot of value in that situation because they're very easy to get to a super stable set point. Now, if your CO2 is rock solid stable, there's no fluctuations, it's gonna mean your dosing is also a lot more consistent. Now, if you have an aquarium controller and you just want an awesome regulator to go with it, this is another situation with the shines because you can dial it in so precisely that your solenoid or your aquarium controller or your pH controller is doing hardly any work. So it will just stay on. It's not gonna be on, off, on, off constantly. And by having it nice and stable, you're gonna have less wear and tear on those outlets. And again, it kind of works as a backup. So if you know something was to stick on or off, having it not relying on it and just working as a backup is kind of like another level of redundancy. So there's a few different ways to look at it. So let's see what we actually get in the box. We have our instructions. We have some CO2 proof tubing. We have a check valve. I'm assuming it's our power supply. And we have the regulator itself. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of like a standard issue regulator, but you got this big electronic box on the bottom of it. Um, to adjust it, your seconds per bubble. So go from 0.1 all the way up to 10 seconds in between each bubble. Now the other kind of way you can control this is this valve here adjusts the size of the bubble. So it's how much PSI is being pushed through it. So more pressure is gonna mean bigger bubble or kind of more gets through with each pulse. So you kind of have two different ways to adjust it. Um, so I did get this for the frag tank. So let's get this baby installed and set it up. Now the actual install is pretty easy. So I'm gonna start by taking off my old regulator, make sure the gas is turned off. And we're gonna unscrew this nut that's holding it on. Now with the new one, just screw it on and snug it up. So it may be too tight, but you don't want it snug. Now the instructions recommend doing a bleed test. Now for that, we want to make sure this dial is all the way counterclockwise, so all the way loose. That makes sure it's fully shut for the second stage. And we're going to slowly open the gas valve. And we saw it shot up to a little over a thousand. Um, now what we're going to do now is just leave it for about 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna shut the gas off. So gas is now off, and we're just gonna watch that. And if we come back in about 15 minutes and that needle hasn't moved, we know there's no air leaks. Now while we're waiting for this leak test to finish, I'm gonna run the clear line to the calcium reactor. So this is going to come in right from the bottom of here. There's a little RO style push tubing in there. And we also have our check valve. So we're going to put this in line as well. This is just a bit of a safety to make sure that no gas or no water ever flows back to the regulator. So I'm just going to put this down right below it. Now there, this is directional, so make sure to pay attention to the arrow. So make sure it's flowing away from the regulator. 
And now this will just attach to the top of our calcium reactor's intake. So it's been about 10 minutes and that valve hasn't moved, so we know there's no leak and we're in a good spot. Now, if you, another way to test this, you could take soapy water and a little bit of paintbrush and paint over the fittings. And that will also show you if there's a leak, because if there will, you'll have to see little bubbles building. And that's a really good way to test for leaks. So now we have our check valve installed, so it goes from the regulator to the reactor. You can hear the reactor sucking a bit of air in from me swapping the connection, so it's going to take a little bit for that to bleed back out. Now, so power is hooked up, and I did manually turn it on just to kind of get things started with it, and then we'll flip it back to auto. Now, if I take a look at the GHL app, you can see it turning on and off. When it turns on, the pH drops, and when it turns off, it rises back up. So it's up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's actually not too bad. So it's kind of going up and down every, like, day or so. So it's actually not terrible, but now because we have a new regulator, we're going to have to readjust this. Um, so we've got two different adjustments. The dial here is how many seconds between bubbles. And as we turn the pressure up, right now it's at zero, so we'll start to see it. So we're about seven or eight there. Now that's going to be the size of our bubble. So more pressure, more bubble. Super, super simple way to think about it. Now I'm going to have to keep an eye on the chart for the next couple days and kind of watch what the charts do. Now my goal is always to get a very consistent bubble count where the solenoid just stays on. And then the, in this case, the GHL controller is acting as a backup. So if the pH ever gets too high or too low, kind of gets out of range, then it's going to take over and turn off power to it. So it doesn't get too low, melt your media or cause other issues. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So super duper easy to set up. So we got this installed, it's doing its thing, clicking away, and I'm just gonna have to watch the graphs over the next day or two and see kind of where the pH lies. So currently it's 6.73. So in an ideal world, I'll fine tune my bubble count until it stays at 6.73. So if I take a look in the back here, you, it's kind of tucked away, but you can see the bubble counter. Now this is built into the calcium reactor and you can see a little bubble coming out every 10 seconds or so. That's kind of how we currently have it set up. So if I want to lower the alkalinity in, or lower the pH inside the CO2 reactor, I can either just do more bubbles more frequently, or I can do slightly larger bubbles. So you kind of got two different ways of tuning it, and it actually is relatively easy to set up. So as you guys see, the carbon dosers are pretty quick and easy install. Now the only thing left, like I said, is going to be tuning it, so I'm going to keep an eye on the pH of the calcium reactor over the next day or so and just fine tune that little digital dial until it stays rock solid stable. Now, whether or not it's worth it, it's gonna be a choice up to you. Um, personally, I've had great experience with it on my other tank for the past year, and it sold me enough that I could justify buying a second one to keep this tank super stable. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next update.